attending the school set up by the missionaries. And one of the missionaries from the Eddy family, one of the well-known families, came to my grandmother and asked if she would allow them to take my father to be educated in Beirut. My grandmother, who was uh, happy because she had a large family, five, sis five daughters and a son, very little income, she said, of course. So my father went to the primary school of what was then called the uh, Syrian Protestant, Protestant College. Later became the American University of Beirut. So my father had the good fortune to have a university education. I believe he was the only one of the family who had that chance. When he had finished, he met a cousin of his who was already established in Manchester, who had come to Beirut to get married. Met my father, liked my father, and said, why don't you come and join me in Manchester? My father accepted. I believe if he hadn't gone to Manchester in England, he would have probably gone to New York, where there were already a number of Jadavi families like the Shabaras, Samaras, Abu Samaras, or to Wichita, or to Oklahoma. But he stayed in Manchester. And uh, what was that man's name, the, the business partner, your father? Yusuf Rubril. He was a cousin of my father on his mother's side. And you mentioned that your father was one of the first to get a university education, and uh, you've been an educator, your brother was an educator. Yeah. Uh, education is so important to our family. We have many educators in our family. Uh, would you talk a bit about, give us the history of the foundation of the Marjun National College here in Marjun? In uh, 1948, after the partition of Palestine, a number of people from Marjayun who were living and working in Palestine came back to Marjayun. In addition, we had thousands of Palestinian refugees in the town. The situation was very serious, not just politically, but socially, but financially, it was a serious situation. My father had the idea of combining the existing Protestant school and Greek Orthodox school which were private schools, let's say not government schools, private schools, combining it into one non-sectarian school, uh, which would provide education uh, for the young people from all ages and all genders. He had the good fortune to find a member of the Volmiye family, Labib Volmiye, who had been the head of a school in Jerusalem, who came back to Majayur, and my father put him in charge of the school, which started its work in the residence of the Greek Orthodox bishop, because at that time there was still no building. My father then started to collect money to build the school. He went on more than one occasion to North America, to South America, to Brazil. He came particularly to Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas, where, as you know, most of our American family live or were born there. So he was able to raise money to buy the land on which the school today is built. I particularly remember that one of the larger portions of land was bought or given by the Massad family. That was the land. And how did he arrange for the building of the actual campus itself? 
The campus was built through a lucky chance. I was in Tunisia. I had, as I said, the rank of ambassador in Tunisia. I was an advisor to Habib Bourguiba, who had become prime minister and then president of Tunisia. When you're an ambassador, you have the equivalent rank of any other ambassador from any other country. And an ambassador represents the head of state. So it's an important position and allows you to meet the highest rank of officials. I became very friendly with the American ambassador. And I became very friendly also with the regional head of the Ford Foundation, who was based in Tunisia. The Ford Foundation at that time was interested in educational projects throughout the world, and in particular in the Arab world. And I heard that the, American, the Ford Foundation were giving grants for school buildings in various countries. So I approached their representative in Tunis, who had already been in Beirut, he knew Beirut. I invited him to Marjayoun. He came in the summer. He saw where the school was. He heard all about it. I briefed him about it. And we wrote a memorandum putting a request for money for a building. The Ford Foundation in New York responded positively. They gave us a grant of $90,000 with two conditions. The first condition was, was that we should raise an equivalent amount of money, another $90,000, and that we should accept the plan for the school, the physical plan for the school, from architects nominated by them. Of course, we agreed. I then went to Beirut and raised the question with the American ambassador in Beirut. At that time, the American government was selling wheat to the Lebanese government, but they didn't uh, cash the, uh, the cost of the wheat. They put it into a fund uh, to be spent by the Lebanese government on cultural or educational projects. At that time, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Education in Lebanon were friends of my father, friends of myself. I went to them and asked if we could have $90,000 from their money. They said, yes, of course, you can have it. So that's how the school was built. Ten buildings cost $180,000. That's amazing. Once again, you were at the right place at the right time right. With, the, with the right ability to talk to the right people. That's right. And, and yes. made a tremendous contribution to your community. And you have seen the school, and yes. you have seen the, the architecture and the plan and the grounds. Yes, we, we took a tour of the school yesterday, and we will have video for the family to see. Well, I would like to think that this school, in a way, is a permanent memorial record of the contribution of the Majayun community in the United States and in Brazil and, of course, of the United States, the Ford Foundation, and the United States government. We are thankful to all those who contributed to this great school, which has literally produced thousands of graduates, who otherwise, because of the situation in Mashaun, in the area, would have had a very much more difficult life than they have had. And, and they've been educated primarily uh, in English, in the English system? Well, the majority either went to Beirut or went abroad, I would say mostly, to the United States. Some of them have remained in the United States, have had distinguished careers. Others went into business, have had successful careers in the Gulf, and uh, have contributed, still contributing, Amirha, Amirha, Amirha,
اللي بسواعد في المجد وبالقصد المارد عمر غاطف حبة يا ترى على عتبي بتساند عتبي عمرها نسم يا شجرة يوسف ضوي ومقصود على اسم النعم مرصود يا عمرها ضوي يا قمرها على اساس حيطان الصلبي على عتبي بتساند عتبي عمرها نسم يا شجرة يوسف ضوي ومقصود على اسم النعم مرصود يا عمرها ضوي يا قمر ضوي يا قمر